Today, we're going to make our dreams come true, doing it our way. That's right, it's time to revisit the cast of Laverne and Shirley, the hit sitcom that followed the underdog roommates that everyone wanted to have, with a friendship that was envied. Sure, they had their quarrels, but it was a partnership reminiscent of the great Lucy and Ethel. This show was destined for great things, coming as a spin-off to Sunday, Monday, Happy Days. The show ended in 1983 after eight successful seasons of blue-collar comedic gold, and thankfully a stellar cast helped it Live up to its full potential. I'm your neighborhood host, Nostalgic Nick, here to catch you up on the latest from the Laverne and Shirley cast. If you enjoy this cast rewind, please give us a thumbs up and hit the bell to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss our next throwback video. Without further ado, nothing's gonna turn us back now. Penny Marshall. Laverne had the best L's in town. She was wild with incredible physical comedy, like when she was loopy just before her big bowling match. When she wasn't downing her signature milk and Pepsi drink combo, Laverne worked with her best friend to cap bottles at Schott's Brewery. As the Fonz himself said, after the studio audience finally quieted down, You know, that's what I like about you. You're not only beautiful, you got brains, you know that? <laughs> And Penny Marshall was the same. With her mother a tap dance teacher and her father a budding director, Marshall had early exposure to the entertainment industry. Looking for focus, she moved to LA in 1967 to join her brother Gary, who had already written 16 episodes of The Dick Van Dyke Show. Anyone use Head & Shoulders? Then you might have caught Marshall's first famous appearance on TV alongside Farrah Fawcett herself. Penny's career would have been vastly different had producers decided that she was right for Gloria on All in the Family. But Sally Struthers won the job. In 1970, Gary Marshall became the executive producer for The Odd Couple, to which Penny quickly joined the cast as a secretary named Myrna. After four years on the show and in her final episode, her character married her boyfriend, played by Rob Reiner, her real-life husband. Then in 75, her Laverne joined Happy Days, which quickly transitioned into Laverne and Shirley. It was actually Marshall's idea to sew an L onto Laverne's shirts after she saw the design backstage and thought, hey, that would help tell her and Shirley apart. Penny, following her father and brother, started directing in season four of her show, with her first feature film coming in 1986, starring Whoopi Goldberg titled Jumping Jack Flash. Next up was a personal favorite of mine, being Tom Hanks's Big. She would once again reunite with Tom in 1992 with the classic sports comedy A League of Their Own. Amazingly, with her incredible comedic acting chops, her directing hand is possibly her best skill. Are you crying? <laughs> There's no crying! There's no crying in baseball! That sharp mind never stopped. Even after cancer spread to her brain in 2010, she fought through it, even appearing in the remake series of The Odd Couple in a 2016 episode. Sadly, she lost her fight and passed in 2018 at the age of 75. The classic L is emblazoned at the bottom of her headstone. Cindy Williams Shirley was cute as a button and innocent, but not naive. Looking for love can be a lot of things. Blind, unable to smell, she put up with a lot. But it wasn't hard to freak her out, especially when Squiggy was involved. And there is no reason on earth why Prince Charming cannot walk through our front door. Hello. <laughs> Fortunately, Kitty the Stuffed Cat always had her back. Anyone else watching this recap? Nobody but you, mister. Cindy Williams started in commercials in the late 60s, and by 1973, she was cast as Ron Howard's love interest in American Graffiti. If you're a fan of Ron's, you should really check out both our Happy Days and Andy Griffith deep dives after this. The following year, she was in the Francis Ford Coppola Oscar-nominated film, The Conversation. Cindy was also considered a finalist to be the iconic Princess Leia. Oh, in a galaxy far, far away. Along the way, she met and befriended another up-and-coming actress. Yep, Penny Marshall. Then Gary Marshall called, and the partnership was formed for season three of Happy Days. So popular, they even voiced a cartoon spinoff animated by Hanna-Barbera. Cindy finally left the show after the second episode of the show's eighth and final season. After she became pregnant, producers were apparently not thrilled about the pregnancy. And on top of that, Cindy and Penny had been feuding for quite some time. Don't worry, they would reconcile 
while many years later. Williams actually reunited with Laverne and Shirley producers too for her 1993 show, Getting By. In 2015, Cindy published her memoir, Shirley, I Jest. Today, she's 73 years old, and she's still vaguely active in the biz, with her last notable role being the 2016 Hallmark movie, A Dream of Christmas. Michael McKeon. Help, there's a hog in my kitchen. <laughs> That's the rough English translation of Lenny Kosnovsky's last name, according to him anyway. As far as roommates living a floor above go, Laverne and Shirley could have done worse. At his heart, he was a good-natured greaser who knew how to deliver a compliment. Of it course a million girls would like to go with me, but I want to go with you! I mean, you're pretty and you're smart and you, you, you happen to be the classiest girl I know. It's enough to make anyone's face start leaking. Michael McKean's journey began all the way at Carnegie Mellon with his future co-star David Lander. He basically had the character all figured out on the credibility gap with Harry Shearer. Yeah, like, like, like <laughs> but then the world met him on Laverne and Shirley. As big as those two girls were, Lenny and Squiggy gained a following too, and released an album, Lenny and the Squig Tones, so fans could always rock out to their favorite hits. Darling. Night after night. <laughs> Sample all your tongs. You could also check out his musical works on Spinal Tap. If you're a fan of heavy metal and absolute genius comedy, this throwback goes to 11. McKeon has had plenty of film successes, from Clue as Mr. Green to Short Circuit 2. He was also part of a great cast in a short-lived 1990 show called Grand as the character Tom Smithson. Hmm. After hosting SNL in 84, McKeon joined the cast for a season in 94. His 46 years old was the oldest person ever to join SNL, until Leslie Jones joined in 2014 at 47. The McKeon and Christopher Guest partnership of Spinal Tap would reunite quite often for great comedies like 2000's Best in Show and 2003's A Mighty Wind, for which he co-wrote many of the songs, one which won the Grammy for Best Song Written for a Motion Picture. Today, this talented fella is 73 years old and still very active, recently as one of the guys you love to hate, Chuck McGill and Better Call Saul. Even Michael McKeon finds him loathsome. David Lander. And there is no reason on earth why Prince Charming cannot walk through our front door. Hello. If you're won over by Squigman Squiggy's charm, it's not your fault. After all, God just smiled all over him. God looked down on me one day and smiled all over me. <laughs> what a guy who knows how to get pizza to stick to the ceiling. David Lander wanted to act when he was just 10 and created Squiggy while attending college. Lander was a huge Pittsburgh Pirates fan and Penny Marshall perfectly cast him as the announcer in a league of their own. A true baseball fanatic, he even helped the young Bill James with his first baseball abstract in 1977. If you love walk-off hits, check out our top sports moments from the 1970s. What a decade. Sadly, Lander did all of this while battling multiple sclerosis. He would speak about the topic and even pinned fall down laughing how Squiggy caught multiple sclerosis and didn't tell nobody. Lander passed away in December 2020 at 73, but not before leaving some pretty sage advice. I will always have my heart and soul, my wit and wisdom, wherever the chips may fall. If I fall with them, I will make it a point to do so gracefully and laughing. Betty Garrett. It's terrific you're here. We're fresh out of beer, but there's plenty of gin. The landlord and future Mrs. DeFazio. She had it all. Style, musical talent, and dance moves. Plus five husbands she divorced from. One of Betty's first roles was opposite Frank Sinatra in 1949's Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And just before Laverne and Shirley, Garrett played Archie Bunker's free spirit a neighbor in All in the Family. Betty lived a fruitful, eventful life to the age of 91 before dying in 2011. Phil Foster. Mr. DeFazio, what are you doing here in the middle of the day? Oh, I, uh, it's quiet. When Frank DeFazio burst onto the scene, he really gave his daughter a scare. Scared enough, she took matters into her own hands with some help. It was his old friend Gary Marshall who recruited Foster for The Odd Couple before launching his most famous character in Laverne and Shirley, playing the short-tempered but caring Frank who loved his muffin so much. A popular stage actor and stand-up comedian, he didn't do a lot of screen work, but Foster did run a workshop for young actor comedians called The Foster Children. Phil died in 1985 at the age of 72. Eddie Mecca. Across the sky. I've been such a, a school friend of the gals, 
Carmine was a boxer, singer, and dance teacher, much like Mecca himself who got started out teaching opera. After Laverne and Shirley, he's still acting, but not in a lot that has gained success. Today at 68 years old, he was last seen in the 2018 low-budget film Hail Mary. This was truly a special cast. Do you remember a great episode that had you rolling? Who is your favorite character on Laverne and Shirley? Should Lenny and Squiggy have had their own spinoff show? Let us know down in the comments. We read them all. And give this video a share if you know someone else who enjoyed Laverne and Shirley's wild antics. Before you go grab a slice, please give this throwback a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you never miss a memory. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks so much for watching.